All right, good morning. So I want to show you guys um, what I'm looking for for exporting when it comes to the current state of your project 1.1, your budgeting spreadsheet. So just as a reminder, all of this section right here are notes. I'm going to give this a different color so that we know that that is just notes. It's just so back that we can reference later on um, and check out what we're seeing. You should have a place to put your income that you earn, which is just a hard number. It's not a reflective data point um, and a place that you earn any extra income. And these two cells should be added together to get your total amount of money. You can see in this top right here that this says the sum of B7 and B8 because those are both of my income sections. For example, if I added $100 to the income extra section, D7 should increase by $100, as it has right here, 61.48. Ignore the backup for now, because that's dependent on this next piece, rows 10 and 11. So you should have a section for bills expenses, fund expenses, grocery expenses, and savings expenses with uh, some sum functions multiplying by the decimal conversion of the percentage that you set for each category. So what does this mean? This means that we take our keystone number right here because this is the total amount of money that we have budgeted per paycheck or per month, depending on whether you get paid once a month or twice a month. And we have that multiplying by the percentage allocated uh, in our budget. In this case, bills is 60%. So to write that function, you start with an equal sum and then a pair of parentheses. You take the data from D7, let me highlight this real quick. You take the data from D7 and you multiply it by the decimal conversion of the percentage. 60% is 0.6. And that's going to give you however much money. Oh, this is something you got to be careful of when you're clicking inside of a function. When you want to get out of it, all you have to do is hit enter. That's going to give us 3688.8, which is 60% of 6148. Same thing with fun. If we look at the function bar right up here uh, at the very top. Fun we have set to 15%, which is 0 0.15. That gives us 922.2. And that is also the same for our grocery expenses. So if your groceries are a different percentage, then you'll need to change this 0 0.15 to be a different percentage from there. And then our savings expenses are only 10% of our income. So we're gonna multiply that D7 number by 0.1 to get 10% um, to allocate us a budget for each category that we can spend in the month. Now, to get the backup, this part right here, this is to check and make sure that our amounts that we have budgeted, this column right here, equal the same amount of money that we have coming in at the uh, during a paycheck or during the month. This is really important because you want to stay within your budget and you want to have an accurate budget. So to do this backup section, you're going to do another sum function. So just equals sum parentheses right up here. And you're going to add up the range of all of your different percentages that came from this total income number. So in my case, because all of them are on this row 11, remember, these aren't actual numbers that I've put in. These are interpretations of how much money has been made um, for this month. And by adding these uh, expenses, by adding these percentages together, I will get a number that should equal exactly the same as my total income. This is creating what's called recursion. This is allowing your spreadsheet to reference back upon itself. Uh, but in doing that can get kind of risky because if your math is wrong, then it all falls apart. This creates a little uh, check to make sure that our recursion is doing, uh, excuse me, doing what we need it to do. All right, so that's setting up most of the income and the budgeting portion. This is your main line of credit. Remember, credit is money that comes in. This is technically not money that's come in, but it breaks down the money that has come in into chunks that we can more easily understand uh, how each of them work. All right, so before we get into this balances remaining portion at the bottom here, we need to think about our lines of debit. Lines of debit are the opposite of lines of credit, right? That's any time that money goes out. This includes putting money in savings, even though you're not spending money technically, 
you are moving it to a different destination, which causes it to leave your account, making it a debit transaction. So what we do here is we created these columns in the Zoom room yesterday. I have a section for notes. You do not need the notes section, but I find it super helpful. Um, so I highly recommend that you include a notes section in your budgeting spreadsheet. Um, but we have a section for bills here. We have a section for fun. We have a section for groceries. And we have a section for savings over here. You do not need these exact same categories. These are just the ones that I'm using. Are These are one of the categories that my money always falls into as a working adult. So I wanna give you an accurate reference of things that I use um, so that you can be prepared for life outside of high school with a similar sort of setup. So to make the math work on your lines of debit, we're using hard numbers again. If you click on each of these, you'll notice that there's not a sum function right up here in the F of X box. It's because these are just, um, whenever I spend the amount of money that I'm spending, I just put in that amount rounded up. So anytime you spend money, you want to round up. Anytime you earn money, you want to round down. This will keep little pockets of extra savings that's going to compound over time. Um, it's kind of like interest. It's kind of not. Just trust me on that. Round up on expenses and round down on income. Anyways. So these are just hard numbers that I've put into here. They are not responding to any type of budget because all we're gonna do is create a sum of these columns in the total section. So each one has a bills, a notes, and a total. So fund notes total, groceries notes total, savings note total. To write these totals functions, it's an equal sum of the column where the numbers live. So remember, mine are F because I have mine in F, I, L, and O uh, based off these letters on the top. I'm creating an equal sum, and in the parentheses, the range is all of column F to all of column F. This will add up the entirety of all of the numbers inside of column F. So for example, if I put 12, 23, 37, 65, you can see that it's gonna respond adding up all of these numbers to get me a total of 242. These are just hard numbers. They are not actually responsive to anything. Just putting them in and they're gonna respond here on the sum section. So for fun, it's the same example, except it's column I. So I'm adding equal sum of column I to column I. It's gonna include the entirety of column I. Same thing for groceries, sum of L to L, adding up everything in L. And then savings sum of O to O, adding up everything in the column of O. This is one of the final steps to establish your lines of debit on project 1.1 so that it's ready to submit uh, by midnight tonight. These are your lines of debit because this is a summary of how much money you've spent in each category. In order to build the balances remaining section, you need these sums because we're gonna count these sums against the amount that we budgeted by taking the difference, the subtraction, and um, making a section that's easily understandable how much more money we can spend on each of the four categories. I arrange my things very visually. You can arrange your spreadsheet however you'd like. I'm just showing you how to do these functions so that you can apply them to your own layout. Um, and these are the functions that I find work the best. Okay, so to do this balances remaining section, this third little box at the bottom here, we uh, have to do just a couple more sum functions where we're gonna subtract the total for each of our categories from our budgeted uh, amount to give us a remaining balance. So if we look at the math here on uh, bills A14, this is an equal sum of A11, which is my bills expenses, or my bills budget, excuse me, my bill's budget is on A11, the minus sign, just a hyphen or a subtraction, H2, which is the summary of what I've spent on bills. And that's gonna give me, since I spent $105, 3688.8 minus 105 is gonna give me 3583.8. So if I put $1,000 in here for whatever, that's gonna increase my bill total on H2 to be 1105, and that's gonna reduce my balances remaining on bill uh, A14 to be 2583. So we're gonna repeat this process, referencing each of these summary locations on our lines of debit on the uh, right-hand side over here. 
So fun is going to be B11, because that's our fun budget, minus K2, because that's our fun total. Groceries is going to be C11 minus N2. C11 has our budget. N2 has our grocery total. And then savings is going to be D11, this uh, budget right here, minus Q2. Q2 contains all of the summaries of the savings that we made for the month. So if your spreadsheet has all of these different pieces, and anytime you add income, it responds effectively, you can check your percentages by setting this number to 100 and this number to zero. And then if we clear out some of these, just a second. I'm just hitting the backspace key. Getting rid of those guys. Once you've done all this setup, this is something that you don't have to create every time because we can just copy this template and it's going to have uh, the percentages set up in a way that we can just copy and then fill in as we need as compared to having to do all of this work every month or every time we get paid. So if you put 100 into the income work section and a zero into the income extra section, these budget expenses should um, equal the percentages that you set in your notes and in your decimals and your balances remaining since we've spent no money in each of these categories should be the same number. The backup should be adding up these numbers to make sure that your budget is accurate to your income. And then in the, at this point, if you've been following along with all the videos and all the classwork, you have a pretty solid budgeting spreadsheet uh, skeleton that you can build and improve on um, as the week progress or as the um, as your life progresses. I mean. So for the purposes of submitting this assignment, since I'm using Google Sheets, you may be using Excel. The process is a little bit different. Um, if you're using Google Sheets, what you want to do is come up to this name section. And this is where you're going to start to apply the Canvas naming scheme. So we're going to go, remember, it's first initial, last name, and then your period number. I'm in period nine, future ready, for example. And then you want to separate this piece of information from the next piece of information with either a hyphen or an underscore. I personally prefer the underscore. Again, keep in mind, this is only required when you submit your files. Does it need to have this type of naming structure? So we have B Blakeney P9 underscore. This is Proj 1.1. You can call it BS for budgeting spreadsheet. You can type out budget. You can do whatever, as long as you've got the uh, Proj 1.1, I'll be able to tell uh, what it is you are submitting. So I'm gonna do Proj 1.1 BS, and then uh, version number, remember, is something that is more relevant to graphic or web design, but I'm gonna throw V1 on there um, because this is version number one of this spreadsheet, draft number one, so to speak, of this spreadsheet so that we can um, understand it from there. Okay. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be around today. You can Canvas message me. Uh, let's. Oh, sorry, I skipped a step. Let's actually download this. For Google Sheets, you go File and then Download. You want to download it as an Excel spreadsheet, a .xlsx file. When you click on that, it's going to take you. Uh, it's going to pop you open this uh, dialog box asking you where to save it. This is where you got to put it in your Isaqual OneDrive. You make sure that your OneDrive says Issaquah before you do any saving so that it's in the correct spot. I'm going to go to 2324, second semester, uh, second period future ready. We'll use you in as, uh, as an example. And we're just going to click save once we can see. This is some testing I did the other day. I'm going to click save. It's going to think about it for a second. And then this Excel spreadsheet is what you uh, what you submit to Canvas. If you're already using Excel, you just do a file save as and do it with the same naming scheme um, that Canvas requires. And you're also going to, sorry, lost my train of thought. You're also gonna upload that to Proj 1.1. Um, you can see it's blinking down here in the corner and it'll have the exact same stuff and it'll still be responsive. So if I change this to be 1000, it'll update. It's fully functional. Just control C. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, we'll fill this out. You can fill it out with transactions today to make sure that it's functional. Um, 
but I'm gonna adjust the requirements a little bit. You do not need transactions in the final submission for this version, but you will in a future version. So don't delete this file, hold on to it. Um, yeah, have a good day, be good for the sub. Canvas message me any questions you might have. I am happy to help. Take care, you guys. Have a good weekend.